In the previous lecture, we discussed the relationship between magnetism and electricity. We said that any time we have an electric current flowing in a wire, that electric current will produce a magnetic field. In other words, if we place a magnet next to our electric current, that electric current will exert a magnetic force on that magnet. Now we know by the third law of motion every action force has an equal and opposite reaction and that basically implies that a magnetic field should also exert a force on an electric current found inside a wire. So once again previously we saw that an electric current produces a magnetic field which means an electric current will exert a magnetic force on our magnet placed next to our wire which contains our electric current. Now by Newton's third law of motion a magnetic field should also exert a force on an electric current found inside a wire. So that's exactly what we're going to discuss in this lecture. We're going to examine the magnetic force acting on an electric current as a result of a magnetic field. So let's suppose we have the following experimental setup. So we have a battery found inside a closed electric circuit. Now as a result of that battery, as a result of an electric potential difference that exists in the battery, electric current will flow from the higher potential side of our battery to the lower potential side of our battery. In other words, our electric current will flow in the following general direction. Now, suppose a straight wire is placed between the two poles of a magnet where the magnetic field is assumed to be uniform as described in the following diagram. So we have our no north pole, we have our south pole, and the magnetic field will point in the following general direction, in the positive direction, along our x-axis. Now notice the angle that our electric current makes with respect to our magnetic field, in this case, is 90 degrees. Now the magnetic force on the current carrying wire will always point in a direction perpendicular to both the magnetic field as well as the electric current. So the magnetic force that acts on our wire that contains our electric current will always point at a 90 degree angle with respect to our direction of the electric current as well as the direction of our magnetic field. Now let's first discuss how we can find the direction of the magnetic field. Just like the electric field, the magnetic field is a vector. It has both magnitude as well as direction. Now we can find the direction of the force on the current inside our wire due to our magnetic field using right hand rule number two. So to actually apply right hand rule number two, we take our right hand and we point our fingers in the same direction as the electric current given by I and then we bend our fingers in the direction of our magnetic field. Now we extend our thumb and the thumb points in the direction of our magnetic force. So let's try that for this case. So we take our right hand and we point our right hand in the same direction as our electric current which points directly upward. Then we take our fingers and we curl the fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. The magnetic field points in a positive direction along the x-axis so we take our hand and we curl it this way because our magnetic field points in this direction. So we curl it this way, we extend our thumb and the thumb points inward towards our board. So that means our force on our wire points in this direction towards our board. So it's perpendicular to both our eye and our magnetic field. Now, we can use the right hand rule to essentially determine the direction of our 
force as a result of our magnetic field acting on the wire. What about the magnitude? How do we calculate the magnitude of this force? Well, the magnitude is given by the following equation. The force is equal to the cross product of the magnetic field given by uppercase B and the length of our wire that is exposed to our magnetic field and that is multiplied by the electric current. Now by definition the cross product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of those two vectors multiplied by the sine of the angle between those two vectors. So the force is equal to the product of magnetic field B which is given in units known as Tesla multiplied by I, our electric current which is given in units called amps, multiplied by L, the length of the wire exposed to our magnetic field which is given in meters, multiplied by sine of the angle between our magnetic field and our electric current, so our L. Now, this equation gives us the force on the current as a result of a uniform magnetic field. Now, notice the following two important points. At an angle of 90 degrees, as in this case, 90 degrees between our magnetic field and our electric current, we see that the force is at a maximum because the sine of the angle 90 is equal to 1. So the maximum force that can act on our electric current inside our wire as a result of magnetic field B is given by the product of B multiplied by I multiplied by L. At the same exact time, if the angle between our magnetic field and our length L is zero, the force is at a minimum because sine of the angle zero is equal to zero. So, the minimum force in this case is zero newtons. Now, the force is given in newtons. So, this equation basically gives us the magnetic force acting on our electric current as a result of a uniform magnetic field. Now, if our magnetic field B is non-uniform or if the angle that the wire makes with respect to our field is not constant, that is, the angle changes, then to find our force, we have to take the integral of our infinitely small force as shown in the following diagram. So, we can take this force, replace it with the following equation, and we get the following result. So, the force acting on our electric current due to a non-constant magnetic field is equal to the integral of the product of our magnetic field B, our electric current I, our sine of the angle theta between our B and our differential length given by dL. So let's examine the following example in which we're going to apply this equation. We want to find the force acting on a wire of a length 6 meters that carries an electric current of 2 amps and where our magnetic field is constant and given by 0.5 teslas. Let's suppose that the length of our wire with respect to our magnetic field, the angle between the length and the magnetic field, is given by 30 degrees. So we essentially apply the following equation because we assume our magnetic field is constant. The force is equal to our 0.5 teslas of B multiplied by 2 amps, multiplied by the length of 6 meters, multiplied by the sine of the angle, which uh, gives us 1 half because sine of 30 is 1 half. We multiply these out and we get a force of 7.5 newtons. Now this gives us the magnitude. To find the direction, we simply apply the right hand rule.